Buongiorno a tutti. Welcome to another edition of Italian America Long Island. My name is Dave Anthony Sutta Ducati. That beautiful voice you just heard belongs to Francesca Lunghi, one of the finest singers we've ever had on our show. And uh, we're going to let you have a little time with her all alone. So let's sit back and enjoy our interview with Francesca Lunghi. My name is Francesca Lunghi, and I am a singer, <laughs> an opera singer. My father is actually from Italy. He was born in Ripi, Fresinona, and him and his brothers came to our country in, I believe, 1967, 68. Um, my mother was born here in the Bronx. My grandparents on my mother's side are Italian, obviously. Um, my grandmother was born here. My grandfather was born in Naples. My grandparents met in Italy. My grandmother went to Naples, which is where my grandfather is from. And um, she was, I think, on a vacation. But she met him. He was a policeman in Italy. And she met him. And they instantly fell in love. It was like that kind of love at first sight. And they got married really quickly after meeting. And um, when she came back to America, obviously he came back with her. And they opened up, um, he opened up a, a restaurant on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. And they had, you know, they were married for, I think I want to say like maybe 40 years before he passed away. And they had this restaurant, they had two restaurants. And um, one of those restaurants was where my mother met my father. Because he, my dad used to come into the restaurant all the time to see her. And she said that's sort of where he like, she, she noticed that this, this guy kept coming around. And they, they fell in love and then that's sort of how they, you know, got, got together and then they got married. And then we all moved out to Long Island. But um, he had, my grandfather's restaurant was called the Capri. And it was, I believe, somewhere on Arthur Avenue and on 87th Street. But I can't, I, it's obviously not there anymore. <laughs> my paternal grandparents also were in Italy, and I actually never really met my paternal grandparents. Both my grandfathers had passed before I was born. My ma maternal grandmother died when I was around 10 years old. Paternal grandmother, I only met her like once or twice because she primarily lived in Italy my whole, her whole life. So um, everyone is from Italy and came to, came here in the 60s, kind of. <laughs> I acquired my love of singing probably since I was a child. My mother's side of the family was very, very musical. There was always music happening. And my father loves, loved Elvis Presley. And so from a very young age, I was always immersed in hearing music and, and singers and what all kinds of music. Growing up as a kid, MTV was my everything. This is when MTV still played videos. They don't play videos anymore. I don't know what they play anymore now. <laughs> but when I was a kid, that was it. Some kids watched cartoons. I watched MTV all the time. And uh, it was a, you know, it was back in the 80s. I'm dating myself, I think. But, um, you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, uh, Talking Heads, The Cars, all of these great bands were, were coming out and and videos were kind of becoming like the, the real big thing and it's all I did. I just watched and I watched and I would sing with them and pretend that I was like a big rock star and um, it, it was it, it, it was a fond, they're fond memories because I, I, I love music and I love all kinds of music. But I was lucky enough to have a great um, education in high school at William Floyd. They taught us singing and, and I just it just sort of happened that I was good at this and I just decided to major it in college and work on it and that's sort of how it happened. The first opera I ever saw was on PBS, and it was La Boheme. I was in ninth grade. Lucena Pavarotti was starring in it, 
and it was that the iconic uh, Zeffirelli version that is actually still going at the Met right now, and um, I was blown away. It was the most beautiful piece of music. It was it was the most beautiful piece of theater I had ever seen, and it just blew me away. From that moment, I knew that I wanted to do that, that kind of singing and that kind of theater. The first opera I attended was um, the Magic Flute at the Metropolitan Opera. And I remember I had gotten standing room tickets. I was in college. I think they were like $10 at the time. And um, it was so amazingly cool because <laughs> it was the like, first time I had ever gone to see a, a piece of, of, of opera live before like that. I did my undergraduate degree at um, the Aaron Copeland School of Music at Queens College. And while I was there, I was primarily working on doing a lot of everything, trying to figure out what kind of singing I wanted to do. Musical theater, um, I was in a rock band, I did a lot of jazz, um, of course studying um, opera or, you know, studying voice. And then um, for my master's, I went to the Chicago College of Performing Arts, and by that point, I had already decided I wanted to go in the direction of operatic singing. My grandmother was a wonderful jazz singer and actually had the opportunity to sing in nightclubs but when she was young, but her father decided that that was not what a lady should do, and so she, it never materialized, and my uncle also was very musical and he composed music and you know played seven instruments and and was also a singer as well um, but the, they never really made careers at it I think I'm the first of my family to actually make a career at music my first professional gig Chicago Opera Theatre and it was the very first opera company that I was associated with uh, I was doing a young artist program with them and that was the first time I had gotten a sense of how opera companies worked and how it was to be being paid as a singer. I have a few memorable performances. Well, one is obviously my very first performance at the Metropolitan Opera. Um, being on that stage for the first time was just exhilarating and you feel like a little kid where you're like looking around and you're like so excited. Um, another really memorable, memorable performance is I was an understudy at Sarasota Opera for an opera called La, La Rondine by Puccini and um, I actually got called to perform and it was so cool because I got the phone call and they were like you have to get into hair and makeup and and get your dress on and then backstage while we were all, we were preset on the stage and the curtain was down they announced my name as filling in for the singer who was ill and it was like amazing it felt so so great to kind of be sitting there and you're like wow everybody is just hearing my name now because I wasn't in the program obviously but um that was another really memorable memorable performance that I look back on it and, and I just smile. <laughs> My favorite composer has to be Mahler and there's just something about his music. You know, there's so many colors in his music. There's, there's so much joy, pain, all of these things that are wrapped up in his music and you as a performer get to go back into your own self and are able to express that with your audience and hopefully if you do it well you're able to then have them express those same feelings along with you and I think that's wonderful and it's something that his music brings out in me. Thank you.
As a professional singer, you are called to sing in many languages. Um, operatic singers tend to have to sing in Italian, German, French, obviously English. Um, I sing in all of those languages. I've, I've also sung Russian, um, Czech, which I'm not as good at, but um, my favorite languages to sing would be probably German and Italian. Those are, those are my favorites. I've been working with Frank Lepardo, who um, is a very, very fine tenor, and he's my voice teacher. And even though I'm no longer in school, at college or whatever, um, he is my voice teacher, and that's sort of, he's who I go to when I need a checkup, kind of, you know, someone to just to listen to me fix things that kind of get out of whack after a while. And uh, we've been together for a while, and, and he's wonderful, wonderful singer, wonderful, uh, knows about languages. He's done it, you know, he, he sang at the Met and all over the world, and um, his information is valuable, so valuable to me, because he did what I want to do, and um, it's uh, it's been a wonderful working relationship. He's become, kind of like my family now. <laughs> I don't think you ever stop. Um, you you will always have a have a teacher that you trust. You you need ears. It's very hard to hear yourself. Um, so you need someone that you trust, whether it's a coach, whether it's a teacher, where they can you know kind of set you back on the right path. You can veer, you know, when you're singing certain repertoire, you're singing a lot, you can get into a lot of bad habits. So I, I think a lot of a lot of singers don't ever stop having a voice teacher or ever stop studying. I don't think any musician stops studying because there's always something for you to learn. There's always something for you to look in a different perspective, especially songs I've sung 10 years ago I look differently at now. I may sing them differently now. So you, there's always something for you to learn and you need that other set of ears to help you and guide you. The Italian piece that um, I like is Studio La Vampa. It's by Verdi, which is one of my favorite operatic composers. It is from Il Trovatore. <laughs> recommended to me by a friend and we just really hit it off and then we decided that um, we could do recitals and we've done quite a few of them within the last I believe five years that we've known each other. Dan and I have done a few library concerts. Um, they're 45 minutes sometimes I've sung with other performers and um, he has a group called Devalicious that I have sung with, and they're wonderful ladies, very, very talented. We actually have a concert coming up at the uh, Sachem Library, and um, the, the, it, it's nice to do the, 
the library concerts because you get to perform for a different kind of audience. Audience members that, you know, maybe don't want to go into the city, but they're also still very knowledgeable. And so you can give them a lot of esoteric repertoire, contemporary, you know, like really famous repertoire, and they, they really enjoy it. And I like those concerts very, very much. In 2014, I was lucky enough and honored to have been chosen as an extra chorister for the Metropolitan Opera, and I have been with them since 2014, um, singing it as an extra chorister, and it's been a wonderful dream come true of mine. As an extra chorus member of the Metropolitan Opera, I appeared in Nabucco, The Verdi Requiem, Parsifal, D. Meistersinger, and others. Um, the piece that I, I'm going to sing for you is Mon Coeur, Souvra Ta Voix, is from Samson and Delilah, and it's a wonderful opera, and it's a wonderful piece of music, and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful character in Dalila, sung by a real mezzo, um, and I think that's why I love it so much, and she's a seductress, and something that I am not. <laughs> I admire many singers, actually, from many different genres. Um, Luciano Pavarotti has always been a favorite of mine. Uh, Fiorenza Casotto, operatic me mezzo-soprano from, from Italy. Um, I also admire a lot of 
you know, at contemporary singers. I, I always loved Freddie Mercury of Queen. Um, I also, Patsy Cline was a great singer, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. Um, these were people who really embodied singers. Elvis Presley was, I mean, I was raised by, I was raised with his voice in my, in the back of my ear. And um, they were wonderful performers and wonderful singers in their own, in their own genres. I'm the primary cantor at St. Edward the Confessor Church in Syosset, New York. Been with them um, since 2015. And I'm basically, I sing at all the communion, confirmation, Sunday masses, Easter, Christmas. Um, they're a wonderful community, a wonderful parish. I've been so blessed to be a part of their parish. They have welcomed me into their community like a family member and they have all become like family to me and it's a joy to sing for them every every week and to celebrate mass with them i actually do teach voice um i have just started teaching voice i, I really want to help sing young singers you know it's a long business and you uh you learn a lot you need someone who's been through it, who can help guide you. You know, sometimes when you're left to your own devices, you don't know what to do. So I have a lot of experience with that, and I would love to be able to help younger singers, help them figure out what is their path in this business, in, in this art form. Because there's a lot of different avenues for people to go. You can sing at church, you can sing operatically, you can go and sing musical theater, you can sing in bands, all of these different things are available to you. You just have to figure out or have someone help you figure out where do I fit in into that big puzzle. Musical theater is also another passion of mine. I love Broadway. I love Stephen Sondheim, Leonard Bernstein. Um, West Side Story is one of the best musicals ever written. And um, Somewhere is one of the most famous pieces from that that musical and um, we're, we're going to do that for you today. segment and also I hope that it inspired you to maybe go to the opera and and see some of these works and experience them really really get to experience them thank you very very much it was a joy to talk to you and sing for you today <laughs>